This is Jared Horak for todaysracingdigest.com and in this video we're going to recap the 2018 Preakness Stakes and we're going to preview the 2018 Belmont Stakes to see if we think that Justify can get the job done and sweep the Triple Crown. Now the Kentucky Derby winner Justify came to Baltimore as the overwhelming favorite, again caught a wet track and, and at the beginning when he, when he broke out of the gate it looked like nobody was going to go and he was going to get the lead. Uh, but good magic uh, towards the inside, uh, breaking inside of Justify. And I hope Jockey Jose Ortiz, they, they went and they confronted Justify from the outset. Now, there, there was some controversy. Should good magic have gone? Chad Brown, his trainer, wasn't happy. Jose Ortiz made a decision, and I think he made the right decision. Like, what were they going to do? Were they going to let Justify just go out there all alone by himself and win, and win the race easily? Or were they going to challenge him from the outset? And, and somebody had to challenge him. When nobody else went, there were a few horses like Quip that could have shown speed, Sporting Chance, maybe Diamond King. Those horses all had the ability uh, to get out there and be part of the pace, but none of those horses went. Jose Ortiz and Good Magic went after Justify from the outset. Uh, they battled through the, on, on the wet track from, from the start till at least mid-stretch. Kind of lost them a little bit in the fog. It was, it was a foggy, awful week at Pimlico weather-wise. Uh, but Justify finally was able to put away Good Magic. And in mid-stretch, he had the lead. And then flying on the outside was Bravazo uh, for trainer D. Wayne Lucas to just miss. So Justify just did hold on uh, to win the Preakness Stakes over Bravazo. And that was a strong effort from the D. Wayne Lucas trainee. Tenfold was third. Good Magic was a close fourth. And then Lone Sailor, just another length back in fifth. So your top five finishers were all just right across the line. And typically, when you, when you see a race like that, that's not a strong race. So then you know, now you have to look at the numbers. And the numbers came back. And, and they were much lower than Justify has been earning. Now, he peaked in the Santa Anita Derby. That was his best numbers of his career for today's Racing Digest. He had strong CPR numbers, fire ratings, final ratings, uh, everything. He was just very impressive in that race. But then in the Kentucky Derby, he did win that race. It was a quick pace, but they, they crawled home in 53 and change. And he was able to win by a couple lengths. And his numbers for today's Racing Digest dropped off from the Santa Anita Derby to the Kentucky Derby. And now again, in the in the... Preakness stakes, they've dropped again. So his lowest career numbers were in the Preakness stakes. Now he's going to try to come back in the Belmont stakes uh, three weeks after the Preakness and try to complete the Triple Crown sweep. Uh, as you can see, it's not going to be easy. I mean, he, he's right now his, his form isn't as good as it was earlier this year. Now, he did catch wet tracks in his last couple, but he's caught wet tracks in three of his five starts, and he's won all five of his starts. The track doesn't really mean anything to him. I don't think this, the wet track slowed him down at all, either in Pimlico. He just wasn't as impressive. The horses that he beat much easier two weeks earlier in the Kentucky Derby, he struggled against that same group of horses. I mean, Bravazo was well behind him in the Derby. He was right next to him in the Preakness. Uh, so right now, it just looks like uh, Justify, the Belmont Stakes, will be his sixth start in 16 weeks. He's just had such a busy campaign. It's been an outstanding effort to win the Triple Crown. Certainly, he can still do it. There's no doubt that he can do it. He's very talented. Uh, he can get out there, and if he can control the pace, he, he could be a solid contender. But right now, just based on his Today's Racing Digest numbers and what I've seen visually and what I've seen in the past, I've seen a, a lot of failed con Triple Crown runs from the 1980s all the way up to California Chrome. And, and a lot of those horses, you know, they, they look like Justify a little bit, you know, coming into this race, maybe over the top. And, and uh, one horse did, was able to get it done, and that was uh, American Pharaoh in 2015. Now, American Pharaoh had a much easier three-year-old campaign. He had two very easy wins uh, prior to the Kentucky Derby at Oaklawn Park. He went to the Kentucky Derby. It was probably his toughest race. And in that race, he had a, a, a two-pronged battle with, with Dortmund and Firing Line. He was able to, to turn those away. And then in the Preakness, a very easy race. The Belmont, very easy pace scenario. So a lot went right for, for American Pharaoh. But Justify is probably going to have a much tougher time winning that third leg of the Triple Crown. Now some of the horses that he's going to be facing uh, in the Belmont Stakes, uh, Bravazo once again is going to be back. And you got to think that Bravazo at least has a decent shot to, to turn the tables on Justify. He's really good right now. Trainer D. Wayne Lucas thought that he was going to be short in the Kentucky Derby uh, because when his final prep race for the Kentucky Derby was the Louisiana Derby and he got nothing out of that race. He just finished well up the track, got nothing out of it. So he basically thought that he was coming in to the Kentucky Derby off of basically a 10-week layoff, and, and he needed that race. He didn't run badly in the Derby, and then he moved well forward in the Preakness. Lucas knows how to bring horses back in a short time, time frame. 
Uh, Brad Bazo has got a decent shot in, in the Belmont. Tenfold, your third place finisher in the Belmont is going to be back for trainer Steve Asmussen. Third place finisher in the Preakness back in the Belmont. Lightly raced. He's got some tactical speed. Good Magic won't be coming back. Possibly Lone Sailor, your fifth place finisher, will be back. Uh, so the Belmont Stakes will have at least three horses, your top three finishers, from the Preakness Stakes. Uh, some others that will be running uh, in the Derby, in the, in the Belmont, that skipped the Preakness. They ran in the Derby, they skipped the Preakness, they're going to run in the Belmont. That's been a big angle since the early 2000s. Multiple horses have used that same angle, run in the Derby, skip the Preakness, run in the Belmont, and win the Belmont. And, and some of the horses that could run in the Belmont, audible for trainer Todd Pletcher, has the same ownership group as Justify. Not sure if he's going or not. Hofberg, excellent pedigree for trainer Belmont. He's one that should be taken seriously as a strong win candidate in the Belmont Stakes. Bino Rosso for Todd Pletcher. Todd Pletcher has had a lot of success in the Belmont Stakes. Bino Rosso has another one with a strong pedigree to go that mile and a half. He could make some noise as well. Possibly some others. Free Drop Billy could go for trainer Dale Romans. My Boy Jack. They could go to the Belmont Derby or the Belmont Stakes. Salamini for trainer Bob Effort. He's been listed as, as at least a possible. Uh, your, your Peter Pan Stakes winner, Blended Citizen, supposed to go for trainer Doug O'Neill. Now, in the Peter Pan Stakes, that's the local prep for the Belmont. The Blended Citizen won it. He seems like a long-winded sort. Maybe Gronkowski. Uh, he, he's one that was overseas. They were supposed to run him in the Derby. He, he got sick. He didn't make that. Chad Brown's going to train him now, and, and he may run in the Belmont. Uh, maybe Machismo is, is another one that could end up showing up. He would be a long shot, uh, but, but, he, but he could show up. So we could have a, a full field. We don't really know which horses are, are really going yet, but we're going to find out in these next couple weeks, and especially next week. And we're going to come back and we're going to have another video next week. We should have a better idea of which horses are going to line up to face Justify and to see uh, if he can win uh, that elusive Triple Crown. So until next week, I'll be back next week, and I will recap... Uh, I will talk about, uh, update these Belmont Stakes contenders, uh, and we should have, like I said, a much better idea next week which horses will be taking on Justify in the Belmont Stakes at Belmont Park on Saturday, June 9th. Until next week, good luck at the races.